Hey everybody, it's Mr. Matthew here, and we're going to have a short video on cell communication. There's going to be some cell communication basics, and we'll have some other videos which we'll get into some of the nitty gritty examples of cell communication, but this is going to be sort of a broad overview of the way cells communicate both with themselves and with other cells. So let's get to it. So first up, we want to describe the ways that cells communicate with one another. But before I get into talking about this, I want you to pause and think about this because I think you're going to have a sense of how cells do this, whether you know all the names of, of how things do these things, uh, but I'm sure you have some sense of how cells communicate. So we know that cells can communicate with one another. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to think, what will a cell do if it wants to communicate with another cell? In other words, how does a cell communicate to another cell? And then what must the other cell have in order to get that communication? So these are pretty simple questions and should have fairly simple answers. You may have some complicated vocabulary to add in, but take a minute, pause and think, and come up with how cells communicate with one another and how another cell can get that signal. All right. So there's a lot of different things you could come up with. You could have come up with some examples of how cells communicate. You may have also come up with some specific names, but all of the trends that you should have seen, your answer should have included the following things. You should have said that a cell is going to be able to produce some sort of chemical signal that it's going to release. Now, those could be things like hormones. Hormones are a very common thing, but there are other types of chemicals that could be secreted from a cell. And then once secreted, will go out. Now, the question is what cells will receive those secreted signals? Are those things that is, is every cell going to receive that signal? And the answer is no. Only cells that have receptors for those chemicals should respond. So some of these signals are ones that will be reacted to by many different cells. But generally speaking, cell to cell communication is certain types of chemicals will be released by one cell or one group of cells, and that those cells that have receptors for that signal will receive them. Now, sometimes a signal will be an autocrine signal. This could be a cell releasing a signal that will actually cause a change within that cell. That could be a maturation signal. That could be some sort of signal that causes some uh, response by the cell itself. There's also paracrine signals, which is specifically re refers to sending a signal to a nearby cell. Then we have some endocrine signaling in which a signal will be sent and in the case of endocrine will be transported through a circulatory system from one type of tissue to another. And again, in the response reception, only cells that have signal receptors will respond to that signal that's sent out. So hopefully you had those two components, that it's going to be some sort of chemical signal that's sent out, and then some sort of receptor that is able to receive that signal and then do something with it. So let's talk a little bit about the cell communicating with one another. And we're going to start specifically with the cells that communicate through cell to cell contact. And so what we often will see is that there are cells where you're actually going to have a gap junction channels. You're going to have cells that are literally connected one to the other, and there's going to be a channel between those. And so again, this could be a plasma membrane, or it could be through cell walls in plants, but literally there's a physical connection between two cells within a tissue, and they can send those signals from one to the other through direct contact. Another example we often have, and we see these things happen with, say, immune cells, is that you will have a cell that will send out a signal that will attract another cell to it, and they will have a binding between them. And so it's when one cell binds to another, and the binding between the ligand that is on one cell and the receptor that's on another in their physical contact will ultimately lead to the change. And so this happens in a variety of different contexts. This will happen with bacteria undergoing conjugation. Uh, it also will happen between, as I said, immune cells, where then when they come into physical contact, one cell will be able to initiate and signal a change in the receiving cell that is uh, getting that physical contact. Now, we often think about communication happening over long distances. So signals are released by one cell that can travel a long distance to a target cell of another cell type. So in this instance, we often use the, the standard way that the endocrine system works using a negative feedback mechanism where one set of tissues is monitoring 
the levels of something in the body. And then once it recognizes that there's an imbalance, something that's too low, it will prompt tissue to release hormones. Those hormones will then go through the bloodstream, find target tissues that have the ability to correct and usually release some additional hormones or some additional chemicals that will cause them to correct the imbalance that was recognized. Once the levels within the blood start to come back up to a normal level, again, the monitoring system will recognize that and then it will shut off the release of those chemicals so you don't get too much of something. So in this particular example, we're looking at uh, recognizing a blood concentration, which is one of the things that is monitor monitored by the hypothalamus. But we could very easily look at things like calcium level or blood sugar level. And these are all sorts of things that are regulated in a similar mechanism. We'll also sometimes have antagonistic signals where one hormone will raise a level and another hormone will lower a level. So that way, if there are uh, the possibility of having too much or too little of something, such as blood sugar, one set of hormones will respond to the signal if the signaling is too low, and a different set of uh, hormones or different type of tissue will respond if the signal is too high. Multiple ways to get back into balance through understanding if there has been a disruption to the system. Now, we recognize that there's a whole set of different endocrine glands that include what is shown on this diagram, the pineal gland, thalamus, pituitary, the thyroid, the parathyroid, the thymus, the adrenal glands, pancreas, the uterus, ovaries in females, and then uh, the testes in males. These are just some of the endocrine glands that we recognize are ones that will release hormones and they will send signals out that will be received by target cells, ones that have receptors for the specific hormones that they release. All right. And then we also get communication over short distances using local regulation. Again, we talked about this paracrine signaling. And one of the good examples of that is what happens with the communication between cells in the nervous system. So a lot of times what we'll have is we will have uh, two neurons will send signals or a neuron will send a signal to a muscle. And in most of these cases, whether it's a neuron neuron response or if it's a neuron muscle response, uh, we tend to see some fairly similar uh, activities that are going to go on. And so again, we will have the neuron that has received a electrical signal that has come down to the end that says release these neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters are chemicals that are held in vesicles. They will travel across the synapse. This is not direct contact. There is a gap called a synapse and the hormones will travel across and they will bind and attach to receptors that are on the cell that is a opposite that. So in this case, you know, it looks like it's a neuron neuron, but again, it could be a neuron muscle. It, in addition to these, there are also going to be some regulatory mechanisms such as uh, reuptake by the neuron that sends this, or as shown in this, an enzyme that might destroy or degrade the neurotransmitters that are in there so that the signaling is specific across the synapse. So this is again, another form of cell communication over a short distance. Uh, we could also have this happen in the case of quorum sensing in bacteria, where you have a bacterial cell that releases signals and that actually will tell other local bacteria whether it's time to come together and group together in a local clump. So we also have not just multicellular cells uh, releasing signals over short distances. We will also have unicellular organisms that will do this. So these are a few of the examples of cell communication. Uh, I hope it was a helpful review. And again, we'll have some other examples coming up that will go into greater detail on each of these. Hope that was helpful and I'll talk to everybody soon.